Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. Last week on MacBreak Studio, I gave some tips about creating charts in motion. You guys seem to like that. So this week I thought I'd take a little further and jump into doing some bar charts. So let's dive right in. So here's the chart we created last week, an animated line chart with an animated camera move that follows the line and then we pull out to reveal the chart. I wanna use a bar chart instead. So first thing I'll do is I'll turn off that Bezier line and I'm also gonna turn off the graph lines because instead of this grid that creates this, I wanna only have horizontal lines. I'm gonna move the playhead back home. I'm gonna turn off the camera and inside the same graph group, I'll first select the line tool. I'll hold the shift key down to draw a horizontal line. I'll press the escape key to get out of that tool. In the inspector, I'll change the width to one, so it's very thin. Then up here, I'll click the replicate button to make copies of it. In the inspector, I'll change the shape from a rectangle to a line. And I'll set the X start point and the X end point to zero. And instead, I'll adjust Y in order to stretch these out vertically. So I want it to start at 200 and end at 600. If I want to shift the whole thing over, I can always go to the Properties tab and just adjust the X position to move all this over. And very quickly, we have some nice grid lines for our bar charts. Great. While we're here, let's also create a new background here. So from the Object menu, I'll choose New Group. I'll press Shift Command Left Bracket to move it to the bottom. I'll change it to a 2D group by clicking here so it won't be affected by the camera. Then in the library, under Generators, I'll add a gradient generator to this group. Then in the inspector, I'll open up the gradient and change its type from linear to radial. Set the start to zero, zero, so it starts right in the center. Change the starting color to something darker and change the ending color to something even darker than that. Then I'll right click in the canvas and choose edit position. And now I can extend the end point of this gradient much further away, something like that. Great, so now let's create our bars. First, I'll select this layer, then press Shift-Command-N to create a new group above it, which is where I'll put my bars. Then I'll press R for the Rectangle tool and draw a rectangle right above January, right about there, and press Escape to return to the Transform tool. Now, this isn't necessarily the right size. If I move the playhead forward, I can see it needs to be at about 300. I don't want to click here and drag up and down because I'm adjusting the scale, and I'll show you why that's important in a minute. Instead, I'm going to right-click and choose to edit the rectangle. Now I'm adjusting not the scale, but the height of the rectangle. It's a different property, and I'll bring it up to 300 to match that value. Then I'm also going to right-click and choose the anchor point and move the anchor point down to the base. Shift S brings me back to my standard transform tool. And now if I go to the properties tab and look at scale, we can see the scale is still 100% because when we adjust it, we actually adjusted the shape geometry properties here. These are the size properties we adjusted when we changed its height. You can see I can drag here. But I'm interested here in the properties tab in the scale because I want to take that scale Y and animate that. Now, rather than using keyframes, I'm going to use a behavior. I'll click this pop-up menu here next to scale Y. I'm going to add a parameter behavior called ramp. In the timeline, I want that ramp to stop right when that number pops up right there. So I'll press O. And then for the starting value of the ramp, I want it to be minus 100%, 100% less than the original value. The ending value is zero, which means don't change the value from what it already was. So I play that, we get a nice animation of that bar. It's a little steppy, so I'll increase the curvature amount so we come more to an easing of a start and stop like that. Let's give it a color by going to the Shape tab of the Inspector to the Style tab. And now it's simply a matter of duplicating this and spreading it across each month and adjusting the position of the numbers. So I'll speed up that process here. So I've adjusted the heights of each one and reset their anchor points, but they all animate on at exactly the same time. 
before I address that, the spacing isn't perfect between them, but what I can do is select them all and then choose Object, Alignment, Distribute Horizontal Centers. And I'll do the same thing with our data. Objects, Alignment, Distribute Horizontal Centers. Now everything's nice and aligned, and I just need to adjust the timing. So I'll select each one, and I just want them to overlap. I don't want them all coming up at the same time. So I'll move forward, and with the second one selected, I'll press Shift left bracket in order to shift it forward in time. And we'll just continue to do that with each one. If you want to give the bars a 3D look, what you can do is select the group containing all of them. I'll just close these up. Rename this bars. Then from the filters menu, choose stylize, extrude. And we can adjust the extrusion direction and amount. Deselect everything, and we've got some nice animated bar charts. If you found that useful, leave a comment below, subscribe, and of course, Ripple training for tutorials on Motion, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and much more. We'll see you next week on MacBreak Studio.